G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for my round nine predictions. Again, apologies for not getting a footy tipping video up last week, as I explained in my previous video. I just wasn't quite feeling up to it, but we are back this week. So again, apologies, but hopefully I'm over this little bitch artist that I've got. A, I'm, I'm not COVID positive or anything like that. I just uh, feel a little bit stanky. I noticed there's a bit of a yellow tinge on the camera. I might have to edit that out. Um, I'm hoping that's not jaundice, but uh, anyway, we've got an exciting round of footy ahead of us as well. Footy tipping is going solidly for me. I've scored six in two weeks in a row since the last video, and I've moved up into the 261st ranking, I believe. The season started well for me. I was, you know, in the top 80. I don't think I got into the top 50, but the top 80 I was very happy with out of a group of about a thousand people. So despite moving up last week about 40 spots, uh, I'm still looking to get back into that top 40. But uh, let me know in the comments guys if you're part of the footy tipping competition where are you ranked right now and what is your overall score as usual guys if you want to know my uh, in-depth thoughts about the previous round I have released a, uh, a round review like I do every Monday and tend to get it up so that is up for the previous round additionally we do have a podcast probably planned for early next week as well guys so following the end of round nine we'll uh, get together with Bush and uh, we'll do a podcast so let me know in the comments if there's any particular topics or areas that you want us to bring up in the podcast but for now we will acknowledge the weekly winners of all the true footy competitions the winner of the round eight tipping was pma tigers who scored eight with a margin of just two so nobody got a perfect nine i'm guessing the one that undid many people was the gold coast suns beating the sydney swans at the scg which was a bit of a shock even though it's happened a few times recently you still never really feel comfortable tipping gold coast to beat sydney so that's an interesting fixture for whatever reason but we'll move on to the overall overall leader which is hen dog 15 which i believe is a first time leader of this competition with an overall score of 54 and winning outright by one tip over second place so well done pma tiger and hen dog we also have a new leader james english has actually moved down to second for the first time in a little while now we've got primetime ballers aka nathan cowley cooper with an average score of 2182 which is just outstanding so well done nathan for leading the fantasy competition after eight rounds as I so often ask guys, I would appreciate if you are enjoying the content on the True Footy YouTube channel, if you don't mind considering subscribing, trying to hit the goal of 20,000 subscribers by the time I go away in August, which I hope should be a realistic goal. I was originally going to Europe uh, in mid-June, but that's been pushed back to August, so I'll be back in time for the finals. But for now, I'd really appreciate your support. If you are enjoying the content and you do genuinely want to see more of it, I would appreciate if you formally hit that button, subscribe, it all helps. So we'll open up Squiggle as we so often do, and you You've still got Melbourne and Fremantle as the top two teams of the competition, which is gross as a West Coast fan, considering where we are dead last in 18th spot with a percentage of 52%, uh, which I'm desperately hoping we can recover. North Melbourne haven't been much better. Essendon, despite their win, still sit in third last. And I think we're starting to see the top seven, I want to say, uh, I said in a previous video, teams that I can't really see missing finals, but of course it is way too early to be making these calls. But again, I think we are starting to see the ladder is reflecting how good some of these teams are. So it's going to be interesting back half of the season when you watch teams like, you know, the Western Bulldogs and Port Adelaide try and recover their position. They currently sit 10th and 11th. Both of these teams, obviously, uh, well, one was a grand finalist and one was uh, eliminated in the prelim last year. So teams who have big expectations this year can they do enough to recover their spot and make their way back into finals it all starts this week you know i think it's a week-to-week -week proposition with those teams uh so it's going to be interesting particularly with the western bulldogs who take part in our first game of the round collingwood hosts them at marvel stadium and collingwood got done by richmond by about five goals last week they've uh, had some up and down weeks in recent times in their last five they've lost to west coast somehow they lost to brisbane understandably and they've lost to Richmond, and in that time, they have beaten the Gold Coast Suns and Essendon, two of the uh, weaker teams in the competition right now. So it's hard to get a read on Collingwood, but the Western Bulldogs have been, you know, probably more disappointing by comparison, considering how much we rated them going into this year. The fact that this game is a hard one to tip shows how far they've fallen, and I guess how much Collingwood have improved as well. But last week, looking pretty average against a team in Port Adelaide who, uh, you know, 
are starting to play some better football, starting to gain a bit of momentum back, but still obviously not quite the team they were last year. And the Bulldogs, you know, needed to look at that game as a bit of a final and couldn't get the job done, which makes it the second South Australian team that they've lost to in the space of three weeks with a win over Essen and Sandwich in between. So a really up and down season from the Bulldogs, but overall they've been pretty mediocre. So this is a real danger game for them. Usually in this fixture, I think Grundy towers up English. Now we've got English sort of playing, uh, you know, career best footy and obviously no Grundy in this game. They did sustain a few injuries last week and Bont was rested. So I think assuming Bont comes back into this game, I still think you have to rate the Bulldogs firepower. I could definitely see an upset for this one. And I say upset, even though Collingwood sit higher on the ladder than the Bulldogs right now, I still slightly rate the Bulldogs more, but it's more a case of surely, surely rather than genuine logic. So I will tip the Bulldogs here to win this by let's call it 20 points. Then you've got Hawthorne and Richmond playing at the MCG. Another one that I don't really want to have to tip because I don't find this clear. You've got Hawthorne and 12th and Richmond have bounced back into the top eight. Hawthorne coming off the back of a, uh, a disappointing loss that has to be set against Essendon where I think they conceded eight goals in the final quarter, led most of the game and then just did not have a response for a team in Essendon that is struggling. Although you have to give credit to Essendon, it was a very galvanized last quarter performance. So Richmond by contrast are playing some of their best football. They uh, obviously beat the Eagles by 109 points in Perth and, you know, the Eagles suck, but Richmond played very well that game and then they backed it up with a fairly compelling five-goal win against Collingwood. So I think Richmond's football is better, but they have dropped some winnable games this year and are certainly capable of a disappointing performance out of nowhere. I do remember last year, Richmond were more fancied and this game ended up in a draw. I think Hawks came back late from memory. This game could go either way. I think Hawthorne are more than capable of winning this game. However, I think I'm just a little bit more convinced by Richmond at this stage, but this is where Hawthorne will come out of nowhere and shock me. But I'll tip I'll tip it at a closer game than that. I'll say 15 points to Richmond. Next, we have North hosting Port Adelaide down at Blunston Arena in Tasmania, a sort of ground where North Melbourne do, well, in theory, play better um, despite it not being a true home ground. They've looked listless in recent weeks north, again, spared only by the fact that the Eagles have been, you know, considerably worse, but they haven't been that much better, to be honest, and scoring just 24 points on Friday night against Fremantle, who are a good defensive team, no doubt. I think it shows where North are at at the moment. They've been really disappointing, and Port Adelaide, by contrast, have got three on the bounce and are starting to resurrect their season, so it's hard to imagine Port Adelaide letting this opportunity slip. By no means is North incapable of winning this. You know, they've been disappointing this year, but this game is a candidate for their first win. It is coming. But I think with Port Adelaide's mindset at the moment, surely they look at this game as, you know, the position they're in, they have to look at it as a bit of a mini final because dropping this would severely damage their finals hope. So I'd say Port Adelaide will win this game uh, and they'll win it by, say, four goals. Again, we've got another game that I just don't want, want to have to tip, to be honest. St Kilda in seventh spot play Geelong at Marvel Stadium on uh, what I presume will be Saturday night. The Saints game was an interesting one against the Demons. They got out to a 47-point deficit. Um, they were getting absolutely mauled, and then they turned it around on Melbourne, who admittedly probably took their foot off the pedal. But I thought the way they played was still somewhat compelling. There was It was an engaging game, and even though they couldn't quite make it up on the scoreboard, I think St Kilda played some reasonably good football to get back into that contest. And Geelong, on the other hand, coming off you know a loss against Fremantle at home, they responded by going and pounding. GWS over at Canberra, I believe it was. It's a tough one. I think St Kilda have been better this year, uh, but this would be the sort of game Geelong say, no, 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 stop tipping us to decline. We're going to win this one and then lose another one you expect us to win. I think Geelong are capable of being better, but on exposed form, St Kilda have been very good this year. This one's pretty 50-50 for me. I'm finding it tough, but I'm going to go with the Saints. I've been criticized for not backing the Saints enough, and I'll say they win this game by 20 points. Next, we have the Swans hosting Essendon at the SCG, and I feel like this fixture is usually a quite a good contest. The Swans currently sit seventh on my live ladder, which means I think they're probably sixth on the current ladder, and Essendon have uh, plummeted down to uh, 16th spot this year on the back of uh, a pretty disappointing first seven weeks of the season. Round eight, they had a good win, as we discussed before, against Hawthorne. Number of laid outs with the flu, they came back, and uh, came from behind and with a big last quarter managed to win the game and Ben Hobbs in particular was fantastic I shouted him out in uh, in a couple of videos I've done this week Sydney on the other hand have been really disappointing over the last fortnight didn't really offer too much of a resistance to Brisbane when they played him at the SCG in a second versus third clash or at least that's how people perceived those teams as the second and third best teams and sure enough Brisbane were far too good and then to back that up with a loss against the Gold Coast Suns they've been criticized during the week for picking and choosing when they play well and uh, 
uh, that is a, probably a fair criticism on the basis of the last fortnight. But this is still a game against 16th spot, and I can't imagine Sydney letting this slump go too much further. So I think it'll be a good game. I think Essendon's capable of winning, but I'll say Sydney win a thriller by one point. Next, we have Adelaide hosting the Brisbane Lions at Adelaide Oval, and this one should be one of the more simple ones to tip. Adelaide's last fortnight uh, hasn't been great. They got slapped by GWS at home, a team that is actually lower than them on the ladder currently, and then uh, couldn't stay with Carlton last week after an engaging first half, uh, just couldn't keep up with the star power of Carlton. So when they're coming up against a stronger team in Brisbane, who just came off uh, beating the Eagles very easily at the Gabba, and you know, a win in Sydney the week before that, they're in red hot form. So I don't know how much I need to really analyze about this game. I'll be very shocked if Adelaide win this. They're, they're a good enough team to, to put in a good performance, but Brisbane don't really drop too many games. I'm going to say Brisbane win this by 34 points. Gold Coast then play Fremantle at Metricon Stadium, and uh, as we discussed previously, Gold Coast have just beat the Sydney Swans over in Sydney, which is a, a very, very hard ask, to be honest, for a team you know that is constantly rebuilding like Gold Coast are. It's a big scalp to claim, so you need to give them credit for that. And on the whole, their first eight weeks of the season has been fairly acceptable. They sit 3-5 and five and at 89%, but they are coming up against Fremantle, one of the hot sides of the competition right now, who just annihilated North Melbourne and Beach along the week before that. So is this a game where Gold Coast can drag Fremantle down to their level and beat them? I think, you know, there's a chance because some Sometimes at Metricon, these things do happen, but I don't think they're capable of dropping them down to that level, to be honest. And I think Fremantle deserve a lot of credit for playing really good football over the first couple of months of this season. So I think Fremantle should win this game by, I'm going to say, as much as 35 points. Then you've got GWS hosting Carlton at the, uh, at, I forget what the stadium's called now off the top of my head. Is it called Giant Stadium still? I think it's still called Giant Stadium. The Giants, uh, the last fortnight, they were very good against Adelaide and then uh, disappointing at Canberra against Geelong with uh, just scoring the 35 points in the game. So it was a pretty meek offering. And to be honest, that's been the tale of their season so far. Hence why they sit 16th on my live ladder. And Carlton, I thought, were very, very good against Adelaide, who, again, is a young rebuilding side. But the star firepower that Carlton have, in particular, Kerno and Cripps in that game. Cherry played very, very well as well. It was a it was an engaging performance, and it's hard to imagine the Giants even being a sniff in this game. So Carlton are capable of lapses this year, as we've seen, particularly, you know, in halves of games. So there is a chance they don't show up in the same way they didn't show up against Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium. But that being said, Carlton have been far too good for me not to tip them, and I'll say they'll win this by 33 points. And finally, potentially grand final preview, we've got West Coast versus Melbourne at Optus Stadium on Sunday night. Uh, West Coast, I, I commented during the week, probably hit the minimum expectation for effort for the first time in a month against the Brisbane Lions, um, partly aided by the conditions a little bit, um, but I think the effort was there. It's just the, the transition ball and being able to put the score on the board um, was lacking. So 75 points probably makes it look like it was a bit more of a battering than it was, but let's not pretend that Brisbane aren't just a fantastic football side as well. And we're coming up against the team that's probably the only better side than Brisbane on current form in the competition, and that's Melbourne, who coasted to a, uh, I think it was a six or seven, I think it was six goal win over uh, St Kilda last week as I touched on before sort of got out to a big lead and coasted but we know how good they are in terms of team news I have absolutely no idea what 22 is going to line up for West Coast there's a lot of uh, doubt around you know COVID isolations and you know, number of players on the injury list who still say TBC. So the only reason I'm mentioning that is because I'm trying to gather what kind of margin we're looking at here. Not so much about the stars coming back, but uh, I'd be nervous if there's a lot of underdone players who can't run out a full game of football. So obviously Melbourne's going to win this game. Uh, they are capable of battering teams. Oh God, what's the max? Okay, the max as I can put is I think 64. Five points. So let's just go with that because that's probably going to be conservative. And there we go. That is the ladder after nine rounds. Melbourne, the only undefeated team at 9-0, and oh, just ahead of Fremantle and Brisbane. Fremantle just nudging ahead of Brisbane on percentage there, while Carlton retain their spot in the top four. St. Kilda claim fifth if they beat Geelong. Obviously, if Geelong win that game, uh, then they wouldn't be fifth. 
that's my analysis. And sure enough, on the bottom four, the bottom four hasn't really changed. I think GWS go behind Essendon on percentage, but you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get the percentages wrong. So it's looking tight around that eighth, ninth, and tenth spot. You feel right now that Richmond, Bulldogs, and Port Adelaide, and to a lesser extent, perhaps Collingwood are fighting out for that eighth spot. And again, that top seven, um, Geelong currently sixth, seventh in my prediction. And I, uh, I still feel like I'll play final. So that's the part of the ladder that I'm interested in at the moment. Certainly not interested in top spot where Fremantle are close and certainly not interested in 18th spot. <laughs> No, but thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what your tips were. Um, should we go for an upset of the round? I'd say probably Essendon beating Sydney is potentially upset of the round. And the game of the round for me could be Collingwood versus Western Bulldogs. It's certainly probably the fixture that I'm looking at uh, with the most interest as a neutral because I think it will have a good bearing on, uh, on ladder positions at the end of the year. So thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.